This interview has been made possible by the View Conference. I'm your host, Jerry Ors from Kids First, and right now we are with Peter Ramsey. He's an animation director known for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Rise of the Guardians, and before that, he was a second unit director as well as a storyboard artist. Peter, thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure, Jerry. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. So like I mentioned in the intro, your career before going to animation directing, including storyboard art, and what I find really fascinating is that you did both live action and animation storyboard art. So can you talk a little bit about the transition from being a storyboard artist on major motion pictures like Fight Club, Independence Day, and so many more, into doing animation directing? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's funny. Uh, when I first started in animation, I was the thing that surprised me was how s there, there are a lot of differences in the in the, the techniques and the ways you go about doing animation boards versus live action but the thing that uh kind of surprised me was how similar they ended up being anyway because it's all about storytelling you know and there's the same rules apply whether it's you know little talking animated animals or whether it's you know brad pitt and and uh <laughs> and whoever you know um but the the uh the the things that allowed me i think to make a transition were the just the ingrained habits of visualizing uh staging and uh the editorial process that you kind of go through in your mind as a storyboard artist e even though you're not literally like staging things in real life you're always thinking about what shot is going to cut to the next shot or you're kind of like you have to think about the practicalities of how you're going to achieve some of those shots when you're working in live action so a lot of those things uh, sort of uh, lent themselves just to be be able to think about uh, think about things in visual detail, uh, visual storytelling, uh, or really important things, a really important thing, telling a story economically with as few shots or as few images as you need, you know, and that's that's a big deal in any medium, but uh, in animation in particular, it's it uh, it really helps. Uh, focus the storytelling. Hmm, that's fascinating. I never considered the economic part of a storyboard artist's job because always to me, their job was to visually tell the story. I never considered that they also have to think of the economics. It just makes the job even more complicated because it's a combination of director, because you have to worry about blocking cinematography, you have to worry about composition, editing, like you said, and I find it amazing that you're able to transition. And your next role, second unit directing. Now for the audience who doesn't know, second unit directing basically means you are directing things that do not require the main crew, the main cast, things like uh, pickup shots, shots, you know, environment establishment mm -hmm. shots, things like that. So how do you think the experience of doing second unit directing prepared you to eventually be doing main unit directing, I guess you can say, for animation? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it was it was um, learning to work with a crew, mm -hmm. you know, and, and learning, uh, learning, not, learning how to communicate in the moment with a crew is very important. Uh, Making sure that the vision that you have on your head in your head is clear and uh, and again you know achievable that it's something people can actually do. Um, so all those skills that you pick up from actually working on a movie set uh, give you uh, a, a kind of you know confidence in the moment that you can come up with a plan and that you can uh, direct people in order to execute it and really. Uh, it's the the you know the second unit stuff as you said you know it's it's stuff that the main unit's not doing so it's usually not you know you're not doing a lot of heavy dramatic stuff and you're not you know so sometimes there'll be st stunts or effects shots that are kind of intricate in what you have to achieve but uh, it's um, I think I think as a training ground for me it was most useful as getting used to the idea of being a director you know getting used to the idea of uh, being the guy who, uh, you know, when you say something, it has a little weight. So it makes you think a little more about what you're saying and the decisions that you make. Hmm. You know, I find the director role very interesting, especially compared to storyboard art, because, you know, it's still visual storytelling. It's still leading the scene just in a very different way. So in your own opinion, what do you think are some very important skills that make good directors, either animation or live action? You know, the, the main job, as I've, you know, stumbled into discovering years and years and years later the main job of the director is really knowing the story you know everything every decision that gets made on a set has to do with the most effective way to tell the story whether that's through the performances whether that's through the compositions whether that's through uh 
you know, the staging, the actual blocking that the actors are doing. It could also be through art direction or through wardrobe or through lighting. You know, all of those things require that somebody on that set has to be able to answer fundamental questions about the story so that you're not telling you're not telling one story in a way that you really should be telling another story in you know you know what i mean so it's um uh and you know i'm i'm still a student i'm still learning i don't want to sound like i'm some great guru of directing because that's certainly not true but um the uh you know having some sort of creative vision and then uh creating an atmosphere where you can uh, get everyone to buy into it and move in that same direction is is probably the most important part of the job, the actual doing of the job. You know, you have you, people have to know what it is they're ultimately trying to achieve. And you have to be the one that's that's that can say, well, this fits, but that doesn't fit. And that's a good idea, but it's a little off target for what we're trying to do. And let me tell you why, you know, so that you can like enlist people as collaborators with you and get the best out of them instead of, you know, just somebody shouting orders and, you know, people are running around like little robots who, who don't really understand what the ultimate goal is. A director kind of marshals all that together to get everybody moving in the same direction. You know, I think you make some really good points about what the director is. And what I find really interesting is on Spider-Verse, there are three directors. You're one of three directors. And I find that so fascinating because when you watch the film, it's a very cohesive film. It doesn't run into any of the issues you're talking about. You know, there's a very clear style that transforms as the movie goes forward. Everyone who worked on the film clearly understands what that style is, how it relates to the story, and what the story is itself. So can you talk a little bit about your experience of working in a trio of directors? Yeah, I mean, it was basically it was it worked because we all bought into the same vision. You know, it was a it was a collective that uh, understood the thing that we were all trying to achieve together. And it was it was basically it was the same goal. I mean, sometimes there would be different ways that we'd have of you know trying to get there. There were debates about you know well what's the best way to to achieve X Y or Z, but we always knew that at the end of the day it had to fulfill you know, certain things about the vision that we had from the movie very early on. Um, and with, with Spider-Verse, you know, Phil Lord and Chris Miller really early on had written, um, uh, they, well, they had written a treatment and that they had uh, also written a little statement, a lot, like a statement of principles, what they wanted the movie to ultimately be about and what, it, what they wanted it to feel like. and. You know, those things that were kind of baked into that original vision that all of us saw at first really formed like the core of what we were trying to do all the time that we worked on the movie. So having a North Star to go to is uh, it's a super important thing. It definitely seems like it. Now, let's talk a little bit more about Spider-Verse. For anyone who hasn't watched it, and if you haven't watched it, watch the film. It is an amazing animated film. I mean, it won Academy Award for Best Animated Film for a reason. It's really good. But if you watch it, the animation style is extremely unique. I mean, you've seen that style in a lot of indie animated films, but in a big production animated film from a big company about a superhero, you haven't seen that before. It's amazing how much you guys were able to achieve. Now... During that process, were you ever terrified or scared or even concerned just a little bit that it wouldn't work and that the style would get a little bit too much and get in the way of the story? You know, that was something that we were always concerned about uh, or something that we were determined not to let happen, I'll put it that way. I mean, we, you know, we really tried to make sure that uh, when we were doing something that was, you know, uh, <coughs> stylistically, you know, a crazy or wild or weird that it had some sort of connection to the story and or, or the theme in some way shape or form we what we wanted to do most of all was express the ideas and the emotions of the characters visually we didn't want to do we wanted yeah of course we had the aspiration to make the film really visually unique but we didn't want to do that uh just because we the the the, the question was always how does this express what miles is feeling in this moment or how does this express the idea of multiple universes? You know, so that there was always, there was, it, like I said, it goes back to knowing your story. You know, we'd always kind of have to reel it back to what's the story point we're trying to express here? How far can we go with it 
without um, losing the audience. So there was, we were always trying to find a balance and it was, it was always rooted in story or character or theme. Hmm. And I think that really helped. I still remember watching the very first trailer that released, the very first just snippet mm. of animation and watching the train go by miles, the subway, excuse me, go mm. by miles. I instantly loved it and I instantly want to see it so much. And the entire film is like that, which I find absolutely extraordinary. Now, going on the more organizational side of the job of directing, animation is complex medium, especially when you're combining a lot of different forms of animation like you did in Spider-Verse. So can you talk a little bit about the day-to-day -day of being an animator on a very, very complex machine that is an animation film? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, that was that's, that's one area where having three directors really helped because, you know, the interesting thing about animation is that at a certain, you get to a certain point in the process and there are several different phases of production going on at the same time. It's like when you're shooting live action, you have pre-production where you're planning how you're gonna do everything. Then you're in production and you're shooting the movie and you know, you've got the actors on the sets and you're every day you go out and you shoot whatever you have to shoot. Then you move into the next phase, which is editing and you edit to get a cut of the movie and then you're working on sound and then you're, so things kind of happen in phases. In animation, all those phases are typically happening at, at the same time to some degree. As you move along in production, there's as, as, more, as more, uh, more scenes get put into what we call the pipeline, it's like, it's like a conveyor belt, you know, and, and uh, you've got people lighting shots at the same time as you have people still animating shots at the same time as you still have people storyboarding scenes. And so it's, it's, there's so many things happening at the same time that uh, it, it, it has become a little bit of industry, industry standard for there to be more than one director on a movie because, you know, two brains or three brains, you know, are what you need to do a massive job like that. Uh, on our movie, uh, the day to day would see any one of us doing kind of whatever job needed to be done. And we all had a, a Bob Persichetti, Rodney, Rodney Rothman, and myself. Like we all had brought our own particular skills to the job. My main thing is <coughs> story art. You know, I came out of being a storyboard artist, and that's that was really mostly what I did in animation. So, a lot of times there would there would be uh, sequences that required some more more attention in story than our story team had time for, or some more conceptualizing in story that had to be done. And I would jump off and do that. Uh, Bob was trained as an animator by uh, Glenn Keane back in, at Disney. So he's the technical t animation challenges of the movie made him the point man on directing the animation. And Rodney uh, had written, uh, was ha had helped kind of wrangle the script into shape. He's a comedy writer. So he was doing a lot of comedy punch up and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, writing that needed to be done on the fly. But at the same time, all of us would be in the editorial room. We'd all be, you know, debating the latest cuts and, and working with the editors, making changes. We would all record the actors. We were all meeting with the art department and giving notes on, you know, more color, less color. What about this? What about that? Uh, so all those other aspects of the film that directors usually deal with, we would all deal with them together. But as I said, you know, the thing that tied it together was still the vision. And I think all great films have that in common. <clears throat> Excuse me. They have a vision that they're driving towards, and I really think that shows in Spider-Verse. And by the way, for our audience, if you're interested in lighting animation, we just did an interview with Sharon Callahan. She is the director of photography from Pixar. We talk a lot about lighting in that interview, so make sure to check that out. But going back to uh, Spider-Verse, I want to talk a little bit more about where Spider-Verse is in the canon of uh, superheroes. Because, you know, these are characters that already existed. Miles already existed. Peter Parker of Spider-Man already existed. These are all characters that uh, we took inspiration from other works, which also meant that in the storytelling, we were slightly more restricted because you had to match the previous canon. So can you talk a little bit about working in a broader canon and having to be careful not breaking some long character arc that was introduced in the comics? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. We, uh, we were freed up from that to an extent by... Uh, by the device of the multiverse. And we were, we, we did try to be as faithful as we could to, you know, the actual stories uh, from the comics. But, uh, you know, when we introduced somebody like Peter B. Parker 
that's pretty he's a pretty radical departure from what you've seen in the comics but again you know we once you have the device of multiple universes you open the door to all kinds of different things you can do and the thing that we didn't want to do was something that violated the essence of spider-man you know even though it might it might really stretch it you know and might really bend it, it it might really like mess with what you think a spider-man movie is at the end of the day, the idea was to get to the heart of the concept of Spider-Man, whether it's Miles or Peter or Gwen or, or whoever, and uh, and remind you of why that character is so enduring and so popular. You know that whole the the whole with great power comes great responsibility idea. It's kind of unbeatable, you know. And the the thing that I think surprised me a lot about the movie was that even though there was so much. Uh, attention and thought about the idea of and you're introducing a whole new spider-man and it's everything's so different and there's all these crazy wild wacky spider-man and it's all crazy but it's still at the end of the day it just makes you go back and appreciate the original idea of the character i and i it just shows me how powerful that was you know, you make a really good point because it does fit with the other <laughs> Spider-Man films. If you compare newer Marvel films and the old trilogy of Spider-Man, it fits very well. It's it's like it found its home almost, which I find mm -hmm. really cool. Now, the other side of this is that Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Verse is an animated superhero film while the rest are live action. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is something about animation that allows this film to differentiate? Like, for example, you know, the crazy multiverse of all these different characters taking from all these different animation genres, you know, that would be a lot harder to achieve in live action. So what do you think are some of the differences between the genres? Yeah, I think, um, well, I just think, uh, you know, visually and, and tonally, it allows you a little more latitude to, you know, to do crazy things, basically, you know, and there, there are some aspects of superhero movies that, you know, they, they, they do a pretty good job in the, in the Marvel movies and, and some of the other superhero movies of, of uh, depicting like incredible, unbelievable things, you know, but still tonally, there's like a, I think the fact that it's animated and stylized to a degree just gives you that much more freedom. And it, it allows you, I think, to do a slightly different kind of filmmaking that's a little more, um, a little more, at, at least at least different from, you know, the bulk of the superhero movies that have, that have been done. Something that's a little more expressive and a little more somehow uh, internal and personal, you know, that, that uh, at the minute you're talking about animation and you're you're talking about a, a visual a, a representation of reality you know and an interpretation of reality i should say so you're you're opening up uh, a lot of possibilities about you know how you can make people feel about these characters that you just couldn't couldn't get in live action i mean the big job in live action is can i make it believable you know you just want people to accept it as real in animation we kind of get to hurdle past that to an extent and go, okay, we can, yeah, everybody knows it's animated. So it's hitting like a different part of your brain. How far can we push that to like, make that idea as vivid as possible? Hmm. You know, I really love your perspective of animation because for the longest time I saw animation as what had to be believable. It's well, the one that it had to work a little bit harder for you to understand, mm -hmm. you know, these are people we should feel about. These are not just cubes and blocks and spheres. These are mm -hmm. characters with emotions, but you're right, especially if you watch older 2D animations, especially from people like Disney, just the way the characters move. It's so That's much right. more expressive. It's so much more uh, characterized to their personalities. Now we are running low on time, but I would love to ask you, what do you think is the ideal path for animation director? Because live action director, that's a very mysterious path. You all, over, <laughs> almost every single story you hear, he or she jumps into the directing path. Do you mm. think it's the same for animation director? Uh, to an extent, I think it's the same for all directors. I mean, it is kind of a weird, uh, a weird job that you know somebody just decides that, <laughs> decides that for whatever reason they're qualified to do it, and you know you could be a bad director. There's plenty of bad directors. You know? <laughs> so. Part of, part of it is just deciding that you want to do it and be it. And these days, you know, you can make something on your iPhone. And if you've made a film, hey, guess what? You're a director, you know? So, but as far as like working in the industry, um, you know, for, for animation directing, there's a lot of different paths. There are people who uh, 
the most I think most of the animation directors that I know uh, have come through story like me because I think it gives you a grounding in both the visual side you know and visual storytelling but also in the just story mechanics the mechanics of story and animation story artists are very involved with the actual structuring of uh, scenes and you know acts and you have to be able to um, discuss a movie in terms of story structure if you're a story artist to just to know what you're doing. So a lot of directors come out of that process. Uh, there are some, not as many, who come out of animation itself. But it, animation is it's such a different craft. It's about like creating moments, you know, and ultimately moments that turn into the whole performance. But the it, it's a it I think it draws on 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 different skills and I think the people that are drawn to it uh, are drawn to something different than somebody who might want to like supervise an entire movie. So it happens, but it's 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 I from what I've seen it's it's more rare. You see more writers become animation directors honestly than uh, than pure animators because once again you know you're you're talking about structure you're talking about a whole different kind of uh, way of uh, uh, the, like a different scale of storytelling, I guess you would say. So there's there's different paths, you know, uh, all it really takes is the desire to tell stories uh, visually, you know, there's people in visual effects who go into directing because their true love is telling a story, you know, so it's it's there. I don't think there's any one path, but unless you're willing to really dig in and understand what goes into story, then it, it's probably not going to work out. I think that's so well put. And Peter, thank you so much for talking to us all about your experience and all about your career. Ah, oh, it's my pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. For our audience, make sure to check out Peter's films, Rise of the Guardians and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. They are available to rent and buy. They are such amazing films. Check them out. This interview is made possible by The View Conference. The View Conference is a yearly CG event that happens both online and in person in Italy. It is happening between October 18th and October 23rd. For information about events like these and how you can get tickets, go to viewconference.it. I'm your host, Jerry Ors from Kids First. Bye!